We have a lot to talk about today, guys. Tesla's up 1.71%. I posted earlier this morning that there was $20 million worth of unusual calls that were coming through. If you guys wanna stay up to date with my trades and unusual flow, follow me over there on Twitter slash X. And I posted that the $20 million had come through, but we need to see if buyers can continue to step in. I was sharing over there that the bot had entered a call position, but I did say that I was going to be waiting for a potential pullback or at least to see what would happen for the rest of the day. When we move into major resistance, when we move into major resistances as we are right now between 268 and $270, what we want to see in a perfect world is not only volume to increase, but more importantly, we would like to see the unusual options market move up and push through as well. We want to see aggressive, motivated buyers as we push into this resistance point. One of the easiest ways to tell that a potential breakout is going to be false is when there's no volume running up into that resistance point, which is why I said I was going to hold off. Fast forward until now, we have slightly rejected here at about $270, and it looks like we're probably gonna close around $263.84. The unfortunate aspect as well is that we closed with Tesla being nowhere near the bullish confirmed flow for the day. Nowhere near highs at all. We ended up with actually Disney at 19.72 million. So while we did see a lot of these very unusual buys come through in the morning and throughout the rest of the day, all of the buying subsided into the back half of the afternoon, which is something that I don't want to see. We want to see price action ripping. We want to see not only volume coming in, but we want to see big buyers on the options market come in and continue to push this thing up. If that doesn't occur, then it's not something that we're going to want to take. So what I'm planning to do is waiting to see if we get this rejection from Tesla between 270 and move our way back down. Because at this moment, we do have a head and shoulders pattern that's still potentially there to be played out. The neckline at 240, the first shoulder over here at 260, the head up here at 280, the neckline down at 240, and still we have this shoulder sitting at 268 to 270, and we could easily pull back down and maybe even test 240, and if we snap that, down to 210 which is why I do plan to open a put position that will be a hedge against my long terms. I have long term shares, 400 of them way down at the 200s, the low 200s. And for me, I'm going to be opening a put position against those instead of doing a call credit spread or, or selling uh, covered calls, which I could talk about why I would do puts over covered calls if you guys want in a separate video. But I wouldn't be getting puts here because I'm uber bullish or bearish, I should say. I wouldn't be getting puts here because I'm bearish overall. I more so would be getting puts just to hedge out my long-term position. Now, I was initially looking to go short at 270, but I ended up not going short today because of this volume gap up at 284, and I had planned to potentially go short at 280. So for now, I'm sitting back and I'm waiting to see what happens over the next couple of days. If we continue to push up into 270 for the rest of the week, but we don't see volume come in behind these orders, then I will definitely open a put position. Unusual options flow and more specifically confirmed unusual options flow is extremely important because it's, ena it's enabling us to be able to see what big money is doing in real time. And while we love to use plenty of different indicators, which we will talk about in this video, at the end of the day, the best things that you can use is real time data, such as unusual options flow. So seeing what big money institutions and whales are doing in real time, as well as price action. And if any of this is new to you or you want to learn more, go and take our free courses. We have a Discord community with over 12,000 members. The link is in the description. It's free. You guys get access to free courses, live streams, seminars, and trades. And we have a technical analysis mastery course that is completely for free and a disciplined traders course that will help you guys keep your emotions in check while trading. All of that is over there if you want to further your trading education. Now, over the past couple of days, if you guys remember, we've been covering unusual flows on Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, Meta, and a couple of others. So just to go off of those, Meta is now up 7% since this unusual flow hit just last week. What made this flow unusual was the expirations of 1117, so all the same exact strike with the same exact date, all of them coming in above the ask or at the ask, which is what this A stands for. All of these were sweeps, and we also had a ton of 
size. So it wasn't just 100,000 or 200,000. This was nearly $5 million with uh, of overall. This was nearly this was nearly $2.6 million worth of unusual options. And with Meta being up over 7%, that whale has made a ton of money. Same thing with the NVIDIA flow that came through. This was even crazier. This was 11.58 million for a 620-2025 unusual options flow. For a 620-2025, for a 620-2025 leap call, this person is definitely up massive as NVIDIA is up over 6.5%. But some of you might be saying, well, that's nice. But what are we going to be trading right now? Because you're showing me all of these unusual flows and all of these great setups, and you're saying that Tesla at this point is not something that you would really be trading. Well, what is? Well, let's go over that right now. The first trade that we are gonna be looking at is going to be Boeing. Now, from a fundamental reason, unfortunately, everything that is happening in the world right now, um, for defense contracts and defense companies, war is very, very good for them. That's why we can see, unfortunately, this descending wedge here on Lockheed Martin, which we're going to explain how this correlates with Boeing, but Lockheed Martin, which is specifically a defense company, and you can see that this thing was sitting down here squeezing, big order flow came through, big push off of this level, and then obviously with everything that has been happening over the weekend, we saw this massive gap up. Now, I was very surprised, honestly, when I didn't see this actual gap up happen for Boeing. Boeing works specifically, and I think majority, it's like 65, 70%, is commercial airliners. But there is a decent amount of the company that actually works with defense and has defense contracts. When war is rampant and high, defense companies, like we said before, tend to do very well. And also, as we say, big money never sleeps. Big money is out there looking to rotate their capital into things that are very undervalued right now, which tech is a bit overvalued, but things like Boeing, things like Caterpillar, Amgen, anything in the Dow right now, most companies travel, which we can talk about as well. All of these companies are very, very underpriced in the short term right now, and we're starting to see a bottom. Boeing here, I entered this morning. You can see that this was the trade at 7.55 a.m. I alerted people in the Discord community that I was gonna be taking a trade. The ticker was Boeing. The strategy was a falling wedge. The sentiment is bullish. I said my reasoning behind the trade is that Boeing has been beaten up for the past six months. We are finally looking oversold enough and we should see a quick snap back to $210. The RSI is showing a strong bullish divergence, which if you guys don't know what that is, all of you will learn all that in the technical analysis course below. I said the OBV, which is the on balance volume as well, that is showing strong bullish divergence. And we're also seeing a bullish order block that came in, which are very good. So my potential entry was 188.53, my plan to stop out was 182, and my potential target was 205. And if we go back and actually look at the chart for Boeing, you are going to see a textbook setup. We have this descending wedge, which is moving its way down here into the support level of 185. We have a bullish divergence, which occurs when the stock is making lower lows, but the RSI is actually making a higher low. And even better, we have an on balance volume divergence, which once again occurs when the stock is making a lower low, but the on balance volume is actually making a higher low. On top of that, we saw this huge bullish order block that came through between 185 up to 190, and then the bounce off of the 11 SMA. Now my plan, because there's so little volume between 195 and 205, was to let my contracts run all the way up to $212, but I did sell early. The reasoning for this was number one, my monthly contracts were up 20%, which is much more than I thought, because I didn't think that we were gonna see a 3% move just today. So I closed out my position, this way I could rebalance the trade because my contracts were very far in the money and I don't want to be trading something as Boeing moves up to 200 and 205, that's maybe 15 to 20 points out of the money. It'll have a lot of intrinsic value since my contract strike will be way lower than the actual price of the stock, but it means that I'll just inherently have lower volume, it'll be harder to get out of the position, and I won't make as much money as if I just rebalanced out the trade and went with something tomorrow 
tomorrow at the money or at least closer to where we are right now. So in a best case scenario, I closed this out. I'm hoping we'll see this pull back to 190 tomorrow. And another reason too was the one hour chart. The one hour does have this sell order block that's sitting here and it looks like we could see Boeing pull back down to about 191.50, which is where I plan to go long once again. Another position that has a lot of meat on the bone, but I ended up calling out today was SQ, which was up over 5%. I made about 16% returns on my November calls. Once again, same exact setup, guys. Don't overcomplicate trading. Don't overcomplicate things for yourself. Same setup. Diverging wedge plus unusual options flow, as we spoke about yesterday. You can see here the reason behind the trade. Last week, big money hit this hard. I entered calls, and now we are finally solidifying a bottom. RSI is diverging, on balance volume is diverging, big money block came in and hit, big money unusual flow hit. This is a high conviction trade, not because I believe 100% that this will work out, but because every single requirement that I am looking for has been hit. And this guy, guys, this is why I don't give a crap if I lose money, because I know that every position I'm taking is of the highest quality and the highest caliber, so that when they don't work out, it's not that I did anything wrong, it's just that the strategy cannot win all of the time. So I said I was already in with calls, however, 4329 range is a great spot to get in. I'd be looking to go with shares or November 17th, 45 calls. My potential target overall is 55, which we'll talk about. And my position I had at the time was those November calls. Since then, I have closed out the position. But if we look at the four hour, still looking solid, I was hoping that we would end up rejecting at 46, pulling back to test 4482. And the only reason that I have not re-entered this or Boeing, to be quite honest, I think even entering now is not bad. But the main reason is because I started to add a ton of bullish positions to my portfolio other than these trades. So I can't have 20 bullish trades open even if they're all looking phenomenal. It's just not smart from a risk management standpoint. So I hope that SQ can pull back tomorrow to 44 and I'm hoping that Boeing will pull back as well. SQ has the same exact setup, descending wedge, on balance volume divergence, RSI divergence, order block support coming in, breaking over point of control, big run up to $55 is sort of where we're leaning for the next couple of weeks and months. I hope that this video helped guys. Check out our Discord community. The link is in the description. You guys get access to all of our resources for free. And if you do wanna trade alongside of me, every single day get access to all of my trading bots, all of my trades, all of our live streams, and become part of the team. You guys can get access to all that with the second link in the description. It's $50 per month, but we give the first month away for free. So number one, prove that we're legit. And number two, if you guys are going to invest your time into us, into learning our style, into actually taking trading seriously, the very least thing that we can do is invest in you guys as well by giving you the product and all of our coaching away for free for the first month. So I hope you guys go and join. Thank you for all the support and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.